Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to a bit of a hollow section of our little fortress. In today's episode, we are going to continue to fortify our position to make sure that even the larger of the Onyx Watch ships won't instantly destroy us. As soon as that is achieved, we can focus on being a little bit more aggressive and ensuring we can take over some of their land. We really do, though, need some new vehicles. The firework, although being very effective at the moment, is only really being effective because it is fighting enemies which are not specialised in any way to counter air targets. As soon as something will fire at them, and something eventually will with any efficiency, they're going to go down, because I still class them as being broke at the moment because of shield changes and other things. Well, engine changes, I should say, amongst some other the things, leading them to being not exactly in the best position ever. So that definitely needs to be addressed as soon as possible. So, with that in mind, let's get back to the fortress then. So right now, as you can probably see, I'm hollowing out a section on the frontier, which had a load of ammo barrels incredibly exposed, a load of single blocks making it really inefficient in terms of block counts, and it also had some pretty poor cannons. The cannons would do okay, I suppose, but they certainly wouldn't win us any major victories. So I've took those out, and now I'm going to go one level lower, and then we're going to in probably install some kind of advanced cannon. Tripping over my words there, as I wasn't sure whether I was going to say advanced cannon, particle cannon, or cram cannon. There are just so many cannon types. And here again we can see loads of single blocks, which are definitely not as good as using beams. So, I'll remove all of this, we'll be back in a second with a nice metal flooring, and then we can figure out exactly what weapon we are going to use. Probably advanced cannon. There are two more enemies now finally heading towards us, and I haven't even managed to put down the metal flooring yet. So what we're going to do, since I'm not sure what these enemies are, is we're going to quickly add yet another firework to our group. It's not really something I want to do much more, adding the fireworks, although the fireworks are effective, like I say, it's kind of boring using the same ships we were using in the last season. So I will try and make a new ship as soon as we get a little bit of downtime once we're finished with the fortress. Until then, we're going to just keep on adding more and more of our broken little plane into our group, or thruster craft, depending on how you actually want to call it. You're also not healing, which is very silly. Now, I will need to edit this thing's AI before it gets into battle, so you're going to tie up them, which makes this a separate group. Wait for it to heal a bit more, uh, let's just do this, so it's now taking from just the fishing hole, there we go. So we can get some metal and natural resource in it, which means it can actually repair itself in the battle, which is generally a good thing, and... It's too late. Okay, so the problem is, we haven't set up its AI in time, because I wasn't paying attention, which means it, it will be on a collision course with number two here. I tend to keep the AI basically blank until I can edit them myself, just to make sure that everyone has a bit of a different AI. It's a nice, simple way of making sure planes work together in a nice, synchronized manner. So, we definitely want the flagship, because the... Um, well, it's actually called the fishing hole because it's long range weaponry, and we don't want the rapier because that's just a nice supply grabber. This is a churl, or a curl, depending on if the H is silent or not. I have no idea what this is, so let's just get into the battle and see how we do. And yes, we will bring the other firework because it's still a firework even if it's not fully repaired yet. And so battle begins, instantly attacking the enemy. Oh wow, that is an awesome looking ship! So that is the churl. As we can see, the laser is doing a good job already, although we are running out of power very quickly. Adding all of those laser destabilizers last time has increased our damage significantly, but it's also made us a little bit less reliable in terms of damage per second. Oh dear. Will these hit us? I'm really hoping not. Oh no, it's the firework it's aiming at! The one that can't move! Oh. AI dead. Apparently the EMP did its job pretty darn well. In the mist, we see the death of the churl. Wait, is that two ships? Okay, the churls. Or something. Okay, that explains why it looks so odd. I just thought that middle section was like an extra piece of armor or something. Nope. Apparently they were just randomly connected. Well then, fireworks. 
And there's the missiles from the fortress, actually doing a really good job. That went straight through the back there. Of course, the enemy is still mostly made out of wood. I am still tempted, I've got to be honest, to simply make that area where the new turret's going to be into a giant missile silo. It's just so easy to do, and it's an easy option to make sure you can survive onslaughts like this early on, because look! Only one or two of the missiles will miss at a time, and it's so reliable, it's lovely. Of course, now the fireworks are out of ammo, because, like I said before, they don't really have that mechanism anymore, and the laser's out of power. We're good at the start of battles, then we get really, really bad. That's kind of the case for everything at the moment. I'm assuming this is the Churl, I haven't seen this ship before. Yeah, okay, okay, so that's the Churl. Now, I would try and capture it, but sadly, there's no way out of a firework. I, I don't really have an escape hatch or anything, I'll just go on board here. See, there's no way out. We're, we're basically boxed in here, so if I wanted to jump out, it would be an absolute nightmare, but I kind of want to, though, so... Let's see, can I make, make an escape hatch? Come on, jump out! Yes! Oh, too damaged, well... At least now that one, we can actually jump out. It's quite an easy thing to do, so we can do it next time if we need to. Does that laser hurt the player if it gets hit by it? I don't want to test it out, but it's good to know. Any chance I can get there in time? I very much doubt it. Enemy dead, okay. Honestly, that battle was a little bit telling that we really do need to focus on overall damage. That's why saying about a missile launcher would be really good, or... That's very loud, because I was just in the face of an engine. Or even just an advanced cannon, just something with a more reliable shooting speed that doesn't run out of power in seconds. That's you, laser destabilizer powered laser of happiness. Okay. Well, that fireworks having a dance to celebrate our victory. Let's get back to repairing it. Oh, it may have now actually been fully repaired. Hurrah for that. Which means we can summon it in. And I'll just quickly set up the AI on this thing, and we're good to go with one more firework to the collection. Although I will be changing this now into fragment warheads because it just makes everything a lot easier. Okay, so after a little bit of work and me being really confused about how cannons work after not building one in such a long time, here we are with our new cannon. So obviously it's quite a rapid fire cannon in comparison to the larger ones, and I'm not completely happy with it. But honestly, the major concern I had was I just completely ran out of space. It was the biggest cannon I could build with the space I was given. So each of these are 80mm shells. They are flak, so will detonate upon hitting a target. And they do have timed fuses, meaning if they don't hit the target in the estimated time, they're simply going to detonate anyway. Now, this really is an anti-air weapon, but... I found that Flak is just so good at doing consistent damage, even against uh, more naval targets, more waterbound targets. I'm absolutely fine using this on the front. Also, it's the type of advanced cannon I've had the most experience with, as if you look at almost all of my designs in the past, every time I end up building an advanced cannon, with the exception of the minigun on the Hellmouth, they have always been Flak, as I find them. I just find them to be the most useful in the most situations. So there we are. Isn't it a lovely brute of technology? So that can go on the front. I'm about to build a turret cap, which has to be a little bit bigger than I would like it, because, like I say, I, I had so little space, I ended up having to build slightly above where I wanted to, so a little bit is exposed, which isn't good, but it's a cannon I'm happy with, and I think it's going to do a fair bit of damage. All I need to do now is set up the AI and its um, firing restraints, and we're good, because otherwise, if there's an enemy behind us, I can see this thing absolutely ripping a hole straight through our laser, which, despite its, its energy consumption is still definitely our main weapon. Hmm, how am I going to do this? Okay, just like that. Okay, that's fine. I thought I was going to end up with gaps in the armor there. Also, can this actually turn... Oh, wait, no. So this is the turning point here. One, two, three. Ah, that won't be able to turn. Okay, we've got to make it even bigger. Ah, that, I'm actually tempted to copy the turret and build a piece of armor a little bit lower than we're currently looking at just to make sure the turret cap isn't ridiculously huge, but at the same time, I don't want to go underneath the outside armor, which would happen. Okay, how about now? Yep, okay, we can definitely do a beautiful 360 of our surroundings, so the turret is absolutely fine right there. So I'll just continue armoring this up, and we'll see if an enemy will attack to actually help us test this thing out. 
But before I forget, I'm not going to keep this here permanently, but, where is it? I just want to quickly add a mineframe, just to make sure we can actually fire upon an enemy being seen. A little bit dark at the moment, apparently the sky is going a weird orangey brown despite being midday, but I do need to speak about our lovely turret. So I've changed the shells a bit, and I've changed the turret itself. It now fires 100mm shots, and each of the shots are now much heavier in flak, and less so in gunpowder. So they are slower firing shots, they go through the air slower, and we shoot them slower, but they are a lot more devastating, more damage per shot, with a larger area of effect, so hopefully, despite being flak, they should be better against ships and against fortresses than their older version, although I still think they should do okay against airborne units. As you can see, it's not like the shells are actually very slow and can go for a very long distance. And of course, they are still timed shells, meaning they will explode near a target if they miss. Also doing this means I've, I've shrunk down the top section so we don't have to put the turret any lower, and we can now work on the turret cap itself. Well, I was going to build the turret cap right now, but first of all, we need to make sure we can still fire in a 360 arc. And the reason why we need to check this again is because, of course, I've made this area a lot smaller than it was a second ago. And yes, okay, absolutely fantastic. Honestly, I wasn't expecting that to work. Look how close that is to the front armour. So now, what I can do is go ahead and go on the inside, cover it in metal around the turret, and perhaps extend the armour a little bit on the front, just to make sure any armour-piercing rounds don't instantly destroy the explosive and very frail turret within. I'm actually quite happy with this turret. It's not the best, but it's cheap and easy to replicate, so we could add these all over the fortress very easily, and they're a jack-of-all-trades turret. Decent damage, decent fire rate, decent range, and decent against all types of enemies, including flyers and heavily armoured opponents. So, just a good standard weapon, I guess. Well, it seems like we don't have a chance to finish off the turret cap just yet, but thankfully I did have enough time to armour up the inside near the turret and add a new set of batteries and some more RTGs, so hopefully our lovely laser will be able to stay functional a bit longer in this battle. I should have checked what the enemy were first. So. Who exactly are the enemy then? Do we have the rapier? Yes we do. Didn't actually want the rapier. Do we now have the flagship? Yes we do. There we go. Sorry, the fishing hole. It's, just, it's got flagship next to it, so naturally I read it. What do we have? We have a bailey, we have an essen, and we have a nightingale. I don't know what the nightingale is, I do know what those two are. Okay, so I think I'm fairly confident with this battle anyway. Let's get all our lovely ships and planes moved out in different ways, there we are. And just begin the battle, I suppose. Let's see how the turret actually does. Even if right now it has almost no armour around the top of it. Oh, we're facing the wrong way. But oh well, we're still, fi we're still firing. Wow, enemy instantly gibbed there. Who are we actually- okay, so firing at those guys over there, I think. Yes, we are. Oh, wow. Look at the blocks being destroyed every hit. Okay, so we can definitely just destroy wooden blocks with every single shell. And by the looks of it, we can destroy more. Now, I am trying to get a bit closer, but sadly, the character can't move any faster than this. And using the binoculars, was just getting fog everywhere. Let's see. Is it enough damage, or am I going to have to upgrade the damage per shot? It's quite hard to tell with the laser shots everywhere. These small explosions are, of course, the flak. Yeah, it seems to be doing well. Not as good as as the flak of old, though, because it has been nerfed several times since the onset of advanced cannons. But, yeah, it does okay. It does okay. It's not good enough, though, no. So we are going to have to change something about that. I'm tempted to go with belt loaders so we just fire faster, or we could go down the route of having very slow, very powerful shots. On the upside, the laser was doing fantastically there. It took a long time to run out of power and just destroyed the enemy. In addition to the fact we're now shooting volleys and missiles at a time, which is lovely as well. Hmm. Conclusion there. Missiles are awesome. Um, the fireworks are still doing pretty well. The laser is getting better and better as we add more and more ability to generate power. As we can see right now, it's going up so darn quickly. And the flat cannon was... a little bit underwhelming, to be honest. It did okay, and I feel like... I feel like over the course of a longer battle, it would 
definitely play its part, but during that battle, it just didn't seem that worth it, especially since I could have had a missile silo in its place. So I will have to do a bit of thinking about that. I really do think that either going down the route, like I say, of belt loaders, which are very rapid fire but can't fire and reload at the same time, or going down the route of perhaps 20... So 200 millimeter shells or 20 centimeter, which are, which is what I was about to say, shells which are much slower to fire but do much more damage. Or we could even go down the route of adding more flak. So it's a slower projectile. It's still a very fast projectile at the moment, which isn't really good against heavily armored targets. Or I could make them armor piercing shots. But that's missing the point of the consistent damage I want at the moment. I will have a think about it between episodes, I feel. I don't have enough time today. So. Let's get to work on the turret cap. Oh, after I spend some of that crystal and add some more RTGs. At long last, we can finally work on the turret cap itself. That took a very long time, but here we go then. So looking back at the footage, I did notice a couple of things. The first thing I would like to mention is I was being a little bit harsh on the turret itself. Honestly, it didn't do a terrible job. It didn't do the best job in the world, certainly, but being a jack-of-all-trades turret, it still did well, especially in some of the shots, just utterly obliterating sections of the enemy vehicle. Vehicle. Now, I do realise that perhaps building a jack-of-all-trades turret right now might not be the best thing against the Onyx Watch, because of course the Onyx Watch don't really have particularly fast vehicles. I think they have a couple? I can't name them though, because I can't think of their names right now, but not exactly in any high number. So, do I really need this right now, is the question, and I think the answer, sadly, is just no. I mean, why would I actually need that? Now, do we have a square corner? Yes, we do. Can we put this in the way I want to? No, we won't be able to. Okay. I was thinking this would fit in a way a little bit different than that, but sadly not. Okay, so let's stop, stop. There we go. No. I still can't control this, by the way. All of these hours playing this game, and I still struggle so much doing the basic controls there. So it will have to be that, which is a shame, but oh well. There we are, and that's looking okay, to be honest. Very dark right now, we'll paint it up a little bit later. But the problem is, I do want the turret to come out a little bit more, and I don't think that will look particularly good. How about we go down the minimum route of this, and do something more akin to this. Arm up the front again, like so. Okay, it's now protecting the most vulnerable piece of the barrel a little bit more, and it's quite stunty, and it looks quite heavily fortified. Now, a question. Do we add armor in this section here, down the center? Because doing this would be really good for reinforcing again the most vulnerable section. But, it just looks weird when the turret tries to fire upwards. The barrels are going to clip straight through the metal, which is completely fine in this game. The physics allow this wholeheartedly. But, is it something I want on this turret cap? Yeah, I think it is. Okay, we're going to stick with this. That way we're also armoring up the mantlet by adding this little section on top. I think that will do. That will do decently. It's not the worst turret cap I've ever made. Actually, I quite like it, which is a nice um, change. But we could always work on it later if we decide we don't like it that much. That is really dark, though. So what we're going to do is go into painting mode. And let's go with... Let's go with brown down the center, then red around the outside. That is really dark. I'm hoping that's coming up a little bit brighter on the video because I did get a lot of feedback from the last video and it seems like the vast majority of you do prefer the new settings even if there is the one issue which a lot of you brought up and I fully agree that the UI is a bit too bright in a lot of situations. So what I think I'm going to need to do, let's go with red, what I think I'm going to need to do when I get back from, um, from the surgery and everything over in England I'm going to spend a bit more time on the editing, so every time I'm just looking at numbers, wrong button, looking at numbers and such, try to make that a little bit darker, try to make the contrast a little bit less obvious. And finally, what about if we make the barrel yellow? Now that should have affected all the barrels, it's kind of weird it's only affected one of them. One. Six. There we go. Uh, no, that looks a little bit... It looks a little bit cartoony. I think the reason why it looks cartoony, though, is because the rest of the, uh, of the fortress is grey, is green, and is brown. And now we have yellows and reds. So it kind of looks like a demented Lego. 
now I've said that, I kind of like it. But still, yeah, it's a bit too bright for my tastes, but we'll see how it looks a bit later. Perhaps we can add a bit of um, grey to the sides or something, just to make it look like it's a bit more part of the fortress. Whoa, that is really dark. How about more like that type of grey? A lighter grey. Let's go with this one. Yeah, that works a bit better. Now it actually looks like it's part of everything, so we'll probably just stick with that. But I'm afraid, though, I am actually now all out of time. This is the last episode I'm recording before I go back to England. This is the very last one. I wasn't going to record it, but I've been having loads of fun with the new campaign, and I just wanted to continue. We are doing surprisingly well. It's now night time, so we can't see a thing. A good way to end. So thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed the video, then of course, likes, favourite, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. In the next episode, we're probably going to finally start working on a new set of ships, or at least building a massive weapon on the fortress to complement the laser. There's actually quite a few things we need to do, so thank you again for watching, and I'll see you next time.